Hello, welcome back to the studio. It is May 3rd, 2021. Uh, so it's Meet the Maker, day three. Um, the prompt today is your favorite artist. And it, it's so funny because I'm the one that created the challenge. So I'm the one that made the prompts. And yet I'm going, why did I do that? How can you pick a favorite artist? Um, if you can, amazing. And I'd love to hear about it. Um, I, however, cannot choose a favorite artist. Um, I have so many, so many that just, I love oh, so much. Um, I would say the first artist that I was like really passionate about as an artist was um, Marina Abramovich, um, or Abramovic, I guess. Um, Siberian artist. Um, she worked very closely with another artist, Ule. They were romantic partners, performance art partners, um, just incredible. Like she, she deals with performance art, body works, stamina pieces, uh, really just such visceral artwork. Um, but she really, I learned about her through, um, my professor at Whitman, Kristen Hutchinson, and uh, Kristen, <laughs> if you're watching this, thank you so much because it's amazing the difference a teacher can make. Like I used, I went into college and it was like, oh, art history. And I was going, oh my gosh, why? Ugh, you know? And Kristen, um, I was, oh gosh, just so blessed to have Kristen because she, Man, it made me go like, art history, yes! Like I love today and like I love discussing and I loved learning and I, it was, oh man, it was just, and that's that's really where I started learning about all these artists. And, and so Kristen, thank you so much for just being an amazing teacher that really opened all of our eyes to just how amazing these artists were and, and how important they are for artists today. Um, but yeah, so Marina Abramovich, um, God, she did this 72 objects piece, which was way intense and amazing. Um, and she and Ule actually separated, um, I don't know, probably in the eighties. It's been a while since I've really looked into this stuff, but, um, but they did this piece where they, they walked along the great wall, they met, they hugged, they went their opposite directions until, until, um, 2010, she did this artwork, um, The Artist is Present, I think. Um, and so she sat at a table across from people that were coming through the museum. Um, it was a modern art museum, I'm fairly certain. And, um, and Ule came and it was, oh man, I'll, I'll post a, I'll post a link to the, to the video because it, if you knew anything about their work or their partnership or just kind of, oh man, it, like just think about it now, like I'm getting kind of choked up. Like the video was so, so powerful, like just, just incredible. So anyway, so she's one. Um, yesterday, if you watched the video, Meet the Maker Day 2, um, I talked about Marilyn Minter and man, is she amazing. And really it's her whole team. Um, a lot of artists work with with apprentices and and with you know sh little shadow workers um that do a lot of the work and so i definitely want to give credit where credit is due um but marilyn mentor is the artist name that that goes along with these works and it's incredible both photography and painting and that's really cool because her photographs look like paintings her paintings look like photographs and this the subject matter is awesome you know, like, I think one of the titles is Shit Kickers, and it's these bejeweled heels in mud and um, lots of eyes with glitter and lips and pearls and oh, amazing. Um, sculptors, can't forget them, holy cow. I was lucky enough to uh, work as an assistant to Dale Zarella, uh, he's an artist based in Maui and talk about some realism. Oh my gosh. He does these life-size mermaids. I mean, he does a lot of stuff. Um, 
But what first attracted me to him as an artist was his life-size mermaids that were just so realistic. And he has this one piece that has over a hundred baby turtles and this mermaid and oh gosh, it's beautiful. And he's working with some orange honeycomb calcite, I believe is the material that is just stunning. Um, and then he has this piece called Freedom that's it's a bronze piece and she is glorious, absolutely glorious. So, um, so there's that. Um, of course, when you're talking about sculptors, you cannot leave out Bernini. I mean, kidding me? Oh my gosh. Um, if you've seen Black Sails, there's a couple, um, it's digital. It's, you know, it's made to look like a sculpture, but it's all digital work. But the intro to Black Sails, you don't have to watch the show, but you can look up the intro and I mean that's incredible but one of the shots is definitely reminiscent if not you know a straight-up knockoff of a Bernini sculpture and that's the the realism sculptures are really for me really amazing um but in that in that same vein it's really interesting because I just had um my friend Chris who runs move true he has he's starting this he started this super chill book club and i definitely put the chill in the super chill book club um but anyway he we just finished the Tao of Pooh, and it was so amazing like i don't really know i up until this point i didn't really know much about taoism um sorry to my professor who taught eastern asian asian religion to 1500 i did not obviously pay attention as well as I should have. Um, but that being said, The Tao of Pooh, such a great read. And it talks about the uncarved block and how Pooh is basically the uncarved block, just simple-minded. He can be anything. He, he can become anything, right? And as soon as you carve that block into something, so Dale carves that block of wood into a mermaid, and then that block of wood is now a mermaid, not infinite possibilities. But what I really love about the canvases and the work that I'm doing right now is they're all still uncarved blocks. And that is, that was a super cool um, crossover. Um, and so anyway, back to the favorite artists. I mean, come on, like, I just, I can't even... I can't even begin, you know, like artist. What do you mean by artist? Sculptor, painter, singer, author, um, chef. Uh, my friend Kento, we went to Whitman together. We were in the same class. Um, his sculpture at our senior show was so incredible. It was, it was so awesome because, of course, when you're... Um, so, you know, we were graduating, so we had a bunch of people on the campus. And in that, there are more than just adults, right? So there's a bunch of kids. And he did this sculpture. It was like nine, nine feet tall and like 15 feet or something long. I'll have to, I'll, I'll find pictures and, and get better information. But it was huge. It was this huge monster. And the teeth were like, ah and you could run through it was like a cave that you could like run through and it was so precious to see all of these kids and adults alike just like getting back to that childlike play um but anyway so he is he is an artist as a as a chef and I don't even know if you can call him a, sh a chef like I don't like that feels like it's so limiting of a description but we were talking about it the other day and really food art takes it one step further right because you can you can see it you can smell it you can taste it i mean there are so many levels when you're you know like with a painting if you're lucky enough you get to see it and touch it right but a lot of times you're not touching the paintings especially if it's in like a gallery or a museum um you know, it's like, uh, no, no. Um, but with Kento, he creates these amazing pieces of art out of food. And so you get to taste it, touch it, smell it, look at it. I mean, 
what's my other sense? Hear it? Yeah, I mean, totally, totally. Um, you know, when you're, when you're listening to the cooking and, and I'm sure, I mean, he does some incredible work. Um, so he's definitely my favorite food artist. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, speaking of artists, Felix Gonzalez Torres, oh man, Dan Flavin, but Felix Gonzalez Torres was also, um, he did, he was an artist, um, in the 80s and he actually was very influential in the performance art that I participated in in college. Um, and a lot of his works, um, for example, one of his pieces, he he dumped candy in the corner and as you pass through, you could take the candy, right? And so the piece changed based on the viewer. And I think that's super cool. And it definitely went outside the traditional box of like, you're here to see, not to touch. You know, it was really a conversation about how the viewer changes the artwork. And I think that was really cool. And I really, still to this day, um, am so grateful for Kristen to teach me about all these amazing people that came before me. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm sure I'm leaving like, you know, a billion other artists out, but... I guess that's it, because I've been talking now for 11 minutes. So anyway, yeah, I just, um, I'm just trying to start a conversation, I guess, to be honest. If you have a favorite artist, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, obviously, these artists that I've mentioned, I'll leave some some links to their to their work because it really is incredible. And I think the more artists that we become aware of, the more opportunity we have to expand and channel. Um, yesterday's prompt was about artistic style and I had mentioned, you know, I used to, I used to be like so upset that I didn't have a style that I couldn't like walk in and be like, oh, that's a Maisha for sure. Um, but man, I'm really enjoying channeling my inner blank artist. Um, so that I find that really cool. So anyway, I think that's it for now. Meet the maker day three in the books. Um, yeah, so I would like to hear about your favorite artist if you have one. Um, yeah, so I'm awesome. You're awesome. Let's be awesome together. <laughs>